Hi everyone, Robbie Weaver here, and I've just finished and printed the final design of my 8x10 3D printed wet plate holder. So, to kick this one off, I'm going to do something I haven't done before and do a little video walkthrough and also kind of a quick video guide to the assembly process uh, so you have some idea what you're printing and how to put it together. So, just really briefly, this is a 3D printed wet plate holder. All right? You can use this for wet plate photography. It will fit into any standard 8x10 inch spring back and it will hold 8x10 inch aluminum or glass plates, um, either full size or the smaller film size plates that you may have on hand for chamois you holders. So let's first take a quick look at the parts that you're going to print for this. Um, so the body of the holder comes in two pieces. We call it the bottom piece and the top piece. These two are going to fit together to form the body of the plate holder. So your dark slide slides on the top, lid goes on the back, plate goes inside. You also have a lid, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is basically a flat piece with a light trap in the back. This is going to mesh with the bottom of the plate holder uh, to keep your plate nice and light tight during transportation prior to exposure. We also have some little odds and ends that you'll need to print. So this long skinny piece, this is the lock ridge that you will have on the front of the holder to make sure that it aligns nicely with your spring back. We have two latches, which are going to secure the sides of the lid to the back of the plate holder. And we also have these two little toggles that are going to help keep the top and the bottom of the lid from flexing away from the holder when it's under pressure. There are also going to be some non-printed parts that we'll have to use, just a few of them. We're going to need a little bit of this three, or sorry, one quarter inch foam backer rod. We're going to use this to construct the light trap. There's also some hardware needed. So we're going to need six pieces each of these threaded inserts. All right, so these are M2 by four by three and a half millimeter threaded inserts. It's just a little knurled set of threads. Uh, that you can heat set into your plastic part to give it threads to screw fasteners into. We're also going to need six of these M2 washers and of course six M2 screws to hold the latches and the toggles down. Um, I'm using M2 by four screws here. You could probably get away with M2 by six. It might be a little bit tight. So I think M2 by four is the ideal size. So let's go ahead and start by heat setting our inserts. So these threaded inserts, when you heat these up, these are just gonna sink right into the plastic. The bottom of the plate holder has six holes in these indentations on the back where the toggles and the latches go in. Now they sell devices specifically for heating up these inserts and fitting them into plastic, but I'm just gonna use this ratty old solder iron that I have left over. So all I do is I set the insert roughly on top of the hole. And then, being careful not to get myself in the finger with the soldering iron, I'm just going to get the insert on the tip. As it heats up, it'll begin to melt in. I'm just going to get that right about flush with the surface, maybe a teensy bit lower. I'm just going to repeat that for each of the six inserts. Okay. Now I've got six threaded inserts fitted nicely into the back of our plate holder. So one more thing we need to do before we glue it up is to set the foam in for the light trap. So the idea behind the light trap is that we have two round indentations in the back of the holder here. The foam is going to go into those and it's going to fill the space in between the top and the bottom of the slot. Uh, where the dark slide fits. So 
When the dark slide slides in, it'll compress the foam, which will press up tight against the dark slide to keep it light tight. When we pull the dark slide out, the foam will expand, fill the entire space, and keep it nice and light tight. So you just want to cut your foam to as close as you can get it, fill the entire space inside the light trap here. So I just start fitting it in first, and I'll trim it. That gets me a pretty good fit. Now I'll put the second piece in. Do the same thing. Just squish it down as I go along. Trim that there. And now I've got foam forming our light trap. So the next step is going to be to glue this whole thing together. So the bottom of the plate holder has an indentation running all along the outside. The top piece has a matching ridge that goes along its outside. These two should mesh perfectly together to align the top and the bottom of the plate holder. When it fits together, everything will have the correct distance for the film plane. So you can use your adhesive of choice here. I'm just going to use a little bit of ABS glue that I mixed up a few nights ago because I printed these pieces out of ABS. If you print them out of PLA, you'll probably want to use super glue. Uh, if you print it with PETG, you're going to want to use some kind of solvent cement. I've actually never used ABS glue before, so let's hope that this works well. Okay, this should be dry well enough for us to continue, so let's go ahead and pull these clamps off. And what we have now is the body of our plate holder fully assembled. So you're going to need some kind of dark slide material to fit in the top here. I've recently discovered that uh, the same trophy aluminum that you would use to make tin types actually does a very good job of filling that role. And you're also going to need some kind of a spring to keep the lid on. But, first and foremost, we need to finish assembling the back of the holder. So you see we have four indentations on the back of our holder. One each for the latches and the toggles. So putting these on is going to be a pretty straightforward matter of just screwing them down. So you're going to want to use two screws and two washers each for the latches, which are these longer pieces. The proper orientation for these is that the little ridges on the ends, which are there for you to grip with your fingers, should go on the top. The screws are just going to go into these channels. And then you can just go ahead and screw these right in to the back of the plate holder. Okay, you want to tighten these to the point where it takes some force to move the latches back and forth, but not too much. And now, you should have two latches, which will slide upwards and downwards and inwards on either side to hold the lid in. And finally, we will use the same procedure to attach these little toggles to the top and bottom of the hole. And there we go. Just like the latches, you're going to want to tighten the toggles to the point where it takes a little bit of force to move them, but not too much. And these are simply going to toggle back and forth 
at the top and the bottom to secure the lid in place. And so now, our plate holder has everything it needs to open and close. I've got a little 8 by 10 plate here, and I'm just going to go ahead and slide this in. As you can see, this fits perfectly in the back. If we pop the lid on the back, we can close the two latches on either side. Give that a little bit of a tightening up. Those clubs, our toggles come down, top and bottom. And that makes the entire thing nice and sealed. You will, of course, need to provide something to press the plate against the front of the holder. Uh, these paper towels, uh, little plastic weigh boats cut in half can work well, or use an actual spring if you're feeling fancy. Now there's one last component of this play holder that we haven't addressed yet. And that is a locking ridge or a retaining tab on the front, which is going to make sure that it fits in the correct location in the camera. So this is just another piece that we're going to glue into place. I'm just going to throw on some gloves here again. Lay a very thin line of ABS glue down, and it's going to fit right into this indentation on the front of the plate holder. Once that's in place, we'll let everything dry and cure for as long as it needs to, and your plate holder is ready to go. Go ahead and let that dry, and the plate holder is finished. So with the assembly done, let's talk a little bit about how you can modify this plate holder. In addition to the STLs for the exact version of the holder that you see in front of you, I'm also going to be providing the FreeCAD file, which includes the original design, which should be fairly easy to modify. Uh, I made this as a parametric design. All of the dimensions come from a spreadsheet in the FreeCAD file. If you alter the dimensions in the spreadsheet, the plate holder will be updated to match. So you can very easily scale this down and up to different sizes. Uh, personally, I intend to make 5x7 and 4x5 versions of this design as well. The only difference is that I may remove the top and bottom toggles from the smaller sizes if they're not needed to keep the lid in place. Some other modifications I have planned. Uh, one is to replace the current frame around design that holds the plate in place with triangular corners, which some people prefer stylistically. I'm also going to make some reducing plate holder versions of this which very simply means that I'm going to keep the outer dimensions the same while changing the plate dimensions. So I intend to make a reducing plate holder from 8x10 to whole plate, from 5x7 to half plate, and from 4x5 to quarter plate, which will simply allow you to print a plate holder which fits in the larger sized camera but accepts the smaller sized plates. Uh, you can very easily make these by just changing the inner dimensions of the plate in the dimensions spreadsheet. So you can make any kind of reducing plate holder you want. You can do 8x10 down to 5x7 and 4x5, 5x7 and 4x5, so on and so forth. Um, the only change I'm going to need to make for that is the cutaway on the outside of this currently goes all the way to the edge of the plate holder. That works really well when the width of the outside is only so long. Uh, with the reducing plate holders, that will look a little bit silly because there's going to be a lot more space here. So I'm going to use a slightly different design for that. I will probably publish that in the next few weeks. Aside from that, uh, you can modify the dimensions as is and get yourself a functional plate holder. One final word of caution, printing the lid. Um, a very large, very flat piece of this size is very prone to warping. So this lid that I have right here, if I set it on a flat surface, the corners do lift away a little bit. I don't think it's a horrible flaw, but it's not ideal. Um, the best way to correct that would be to actually print this with a brim 
let it fully cool on the bed, and then print, and then cut the brim away from the piece afterwards. That is probably what I'll be doing for the next lid that I print. Aside from that, uh, good luck printing, and enjoy the playbook.